All right, well, Qantas is about to go where no airline has ever gone before. We're talking about a non-stop flight all the way from New York to Sydney. Now, the plan is to test the viability of this kind of long-distance flight on board. They're going to have dietitians and doctors who are set to monitor their own health throughout the journey and assess how future passengers would cope on such a long trip. And for more on this, please say we're joined by Qantas CEO Alan Joyce, who's in New York. Uh, Alan, great to see you. Uh, hey, direct Tom. flight, are you all prepped? Great have you, to see you. Got, a, got a book and figured out what uh, movies you're going to watch? I have time. Well, I flew over just to fly back, so it's a bit of a long distance to come. Uh, but the flight is going to be groundbreaking, as you said. It's 19 hours. Uh, we've got a lot of scientists, and we're looking at different ways of making the, the operation actually great for our passengers. A different meal service, where the meal's actually time to make you go to sleep at the right time. Uh, we're different lighting on the aircraft. And we're also measuring what impact that has on the pilot, so we can uh, get the regulator to agree to longer flights because we'd like to make this a daily occurrence both from Sydney to New York, Melbourne to New York, Melbourne and Sydney to London as well eventually. So this is quite exciting for us. Well, what are some of the things you're testing here? Because at the moment the longest flight you have I think is to Dallas which is sort of 16-ish hours so you're only adding a few hours on. What do, what do you think are going to the, the extra challenges on a route like a, a flight to New York? Well, the regulations at the moment only allow the pilots to fly for around 18 hours and uh, have a tour of duty of around 20 hours. We need to increase that to 22, maybe up to 24 hours to do London from Sydney. And so one of the things we're doing is we're putting a, a monitor that monitors the brain waves of the pilots. Uh, they're going through a 20-day study, uh, which looks at the melatonin levels in their urine. Uh, they're looking at how observant they are in the cockpit. We have five cameras watching what the pilots are doing. And so they've, they've, they've instigated this research and are very keen on this research. And it won't just help on these long flights to London and to New York, but on the existing flight network that we do. And also, as I said, we've got six volunteer passengers who are going to see what, we're, what, we're, what we think is good for jet lag and avoiding jet lag uh, with different meals, different drinking regimes, different lighting regimes and we think we can use that to advise passengers of how to avoid jet lag even on flights to LA or existing flights into Asia. Now uh, you said there uh, you're hoping to get all the way to London as well I mean that's a huge flight when you're talking about direct from Melbourne or, or Sydney as well I mean how long do you think until we get the the kind of aircraft that could do that kind of trip because as I understand it you've got a very limited load on, on the current uh, Dreamliner you're taking. Yeah, we have, Tom. And you think, 30 years ago, we flew a brand new 747-400 Ford engines, and we did fly from London to Sydney, and we had no passengers and no seats on it, and it barely made it. And next month, we'll do, with the 787, a flight from London to Sydney, and we'll have 50 people on it and all the seats. But there is an aircraft coming, both Boeing and Airbus have it, called the 777-8X and the 350. That will be available, we think, by 2023. That can do with a full payload, over 200 people on the aircraft, which makes it commercial. And we're in talks with both Boeing and Airbus uh, to get the right commercial terms for that aircraft. So we're confident if the business case for us works, we'll make a decision by the end of this year, and we'll have uh, potentially flying by 2023 uh, to both of those destinations. Now, you said it's a 19-hour it's a flight, this one from New York to Sydney, but there's going to be spare seats galore on there. Are there people that have volunteered that you're still going to force to sit in economy and almost taunt them with the fact that there are spare business and first-class seats up the front? Well, well, I think everybody's got a business class seat because there is, uh, there's enough seats to do that. But the pilots have told me that if everybody stands up the front, the aircraft flies nose down and it burns <laughs> more fuel. So my job is to encourage everybody to go down the back. So I think I'm going to open an orange bar down the back and encourage people to go back there and celebrate a bit so the aircraft can fly level. Mate, if you tell them that, the plane will be tilted backwards. You'll be flying with a heavy drag if you've got the bar <laughs> down the back. No, Alan, we wish you all the best, safe travels, and we look forward to finding out Thanks, how, it, uh, how it all pans out.